Hi guys and welcome to today's task. For today's task, I am gonna show you all things tie downs. It is that time of year where everybody is starting to get out for their summer activities, whether it is requiring you to tie down a machine on a trailer, or maybe you just gotta tie down some luggage on the top of a minivan. It doesn't matter what you're securing, it just matters that it's secure and safe. And I wanna show you how to use the tools that help you do that. No, I did not go overboard on tying this machine down, which has not been debuted yet. You guys are getting the first peek of it. <laughs> it's amazing. Typically, I would only use two tie downs on this end of the machine, but I wanted to stretch out a few of these to show you the different kinds. There are a lot of different tie downs out there, and some of it's confusing, some of it's really simple, and you may just need to know what to use and when to use it. This one right here and this one look totally different, but they're actually the exact same. One's just a little bit maybe heavier duty for a little bit heavier load, but they are a simple pull and tie down, tie down. But if you can tell, they don't get very tight. They're a little bit difficult to really cinch your load down. These are kind of meant to be pulled against with a ratchet style, which I'll show you. But these two are the same. Don't let it fool you. This one looks like it's a simple pull, but it actually has a ratchet down here to take up your load as well. This is a very expensive style tie down. To give you a little perspective on it, this is maybe a $2 or $3. I think this one was $6 at Harbor Freight, which is not my favorite place to buy tie downs, but for these pull down ones, they work pretty well. This is a special motorcycle style, and these are $50 a piece. They're very expensive. Working our way up the spectrum, we have, this is just a heavier duty style ratchet strap. And these are maybe about 20 bucks a piece, but this is a 20 foot length and a 2000 pound. It's a heavy duty and a long load. This is a retractable custom one that I built for this trailer, all combined with my work and everything like that. This is probably about a $30 tie down as well. This is a custom tie down for motorcycles only, but I wanted to show you that there's a broad array of all different kinds of tie downs out there. This is a $200 tie down, but it does make it simple and fast. When it comes to doing any tie down work, when it comes to especially my machines, I'm very particular about how messy it looks, how long it takes, and how secure it feels. Those three requirements have to be met for me to be happy. I don't wanna spend a lot of time figuring it out every time I tie it down. I want a system built, and that's what I just use every single time. Also, it needs to be secure. I cannot go down the road feeling like I'm gonna lose it, because if I do, I don't drive safe, and at the end of the day, that's just not safe for other people on the road. So make sure your load is secure. And the other one is I hate having all of this flopping around. So there are certain ways to kind of take up this slack, if you will. And on some of my tie downs, I'll actually go ahead and cut that slack if I know I never need that much room. I do like to designate tie downs for certain machines and that's a little bit particular that means i have a lot of tie downs but in the grand scheme of things it's my time and um security that i care about the most and that matters and i'll spend the money on that i'm not going to go over the where and location of how you tie down because each machine is different all of your luggage is a little bit different but um what does matter is how you're using them with these pull type i have kind of a system built in um, I like to make sure that I can get a good pull on it because if I can't, it doesn't do me any good. I'm never gonna get it tight enough. So I put it between my two destinations or two die down points and then I cinch. But as you can tell, there's not really the greatest way to tie that down. That's never gonna get much tighter than that. And if this machine flexes at all, this will come undone real easy. So I like to set these ones and then ratchet to the front so it puts a lot more tension on it. So this is a simple style, it's cheaper. It's not the most secure way to hold your load, but it will work. You just have to kind of counteract against them. Something to keep in mind is where you put this buckle at. If I put it up here, I'm pulling this way. If I put it down here, I'm actually pulling this way. And sometimes, depending on how it goes, you can get a little more leverage. But like I say, these aren't the best kind. They're just good to work against. They're not my favorite but they're simple and cheap. When it comes to this style of ratchet strap, which is more common, this one's just heavier duty than most, but they're identical. Even if they're smaller or even bigger than this, they work the exact same way. You take your strap, and I like to just kind of orient myself with it. Um, if it's closed up, this is how it's gonna look. So I need to make sure my strap doesn't ever go through this. A lot of people like to feed it through one way, and it's just really not the way they work. And it also, makes it so you're gonna bind up later on. So, I'll close it up, is a good way to remember. Feed it through and bring your slack back over this way. 
I don't ever like to go the opposite way. I like to always bring it through the bottom and then out the top. A common mistake people make is they get it fed through properly, but then they take and make all of that slack wrap around this little buckle. And that's just not enough room. So they'll sit there and pull up all the slack till they have a huge wad inside of here and their strap is nowhere near tight. So that is not the correct way to use that. You've got it fed through, pull all of your slack until it's tight. Put as much tension on it as you can by yourself. Then start ratcheting. Now your strap is doing what it was meant to do. It's got all the tension on it. It's tightening just enough around here that it's not gonna come undone. And then you end up with your slack. To release them is the same on all of them. You pull up this particular level with the handle, the one that flexes with it, and bring it square down. And you just heard it and it went crazy and all the tension's off of it. And now you can undo your load. So let's tighten it back up one more time. And the best way to remember how to do it is to have the ratchet close together, feed it through the bottom and up the top and pull all of your slack out. On these straps, if it's down like that, it's actually locked in a closed position. So you lift this tab again, just to get it over the hump, a little locking position and start tightening. And now that it's tight and secure, I have all this slack that I need to take care of. And there are a million different ways to do that. Some people will bind it together, shove it underneath this and pull it in. I've seen this method work, but I've also seen it come undone. Uh, truckers are really, really good at it, but the average Joe like me and you, I think our best way is to just start tying it up. So I will create a small loop over it and run it in, create another loop, run, run it over. Oh, let's see, I gotta think about this for a second. How do I do this every time? So I create a loop and pull it. And then with the other loop I create, how do I do that? It's almost like crocheting. You just keep pulling over top, on below, and keep pulling your loop in. And then that last one, you definitely want to pull that tight and it keeps your slack together. And here's the thing, once I get it undone, the reason I like it that way is because I can just pull it and all the slack goes. Now this last style I want to show you is my favorite. These are definitely the more pricey of all of them um, when it comes to buying a whole stack of them, but they're the simplest to use and they're easy every time. And when you're putting them away, that's as big as it is. You got this little bit of slack, that's it. So you can throw these into a bin and they'll all be the same every time. This is a self-containing, so it actually rolls up on itself each time. It's meant to not have any slack that you have to tie down and it just keeps it really tight and conformed and I like that the most. Like I say, these are the most expensive, but they're the ones that I've started switching all mine over to. Like I say, they are pricey, but I will link them in the description if you're interested in them because they are the ones that you're gonna find the simplest to use. You bring this all the way down, as flat as it'll go there, push the red button, and now that is retractable and it will let you out that slack you need. So you pull a little bit of slack out, hook it on the other spot, push the red button to take up the slack, like that. Now that's not tight by any means but it gets you at a point where you're not ratcheting all day long to get it tight. Then push the red button, lift it over, and now start ratcheting. This strap's not going anywhere. It's locked, it's secure, and it's self-contained. I don't have slack flapping anywhere. My load is tight, and these come in all different lengths. They also come in different widths as well for different poundages that you need for whatever load you're carrying. So if you're gonna try and buy some new ones, I would go for these, they're the simplest, and you'll not regret them. When it comes to releasing this one, it's just as simple as well. You push the red button and push all the way down, and your load is released. You guys, hopefully you learned something about how to tie down your vehicle or how to tie down your cargo for this summer's adventures. Hopefully you've got some fun things planned. Comment down below what you found or tips or tricks that you use for tying down your cargo a little bit better. Maybe there's something that I haven't seen or heard of. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys are interested in a Today's Task hat, they are going fast. Email mytodaystask at gmail.com and we'll send you all the purchasing information. You guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. For watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh, I'm an idiot. Stupid tripod. Hi, guys, and welcome to today's task. How's it going? Good, how are you? Just talking to myself. Oh, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> but this. Man, Joe, you're losing your mind here. A little bit. And it... Nope. What's going on here? It secures the load.
take this 